we go. Now we are live. Um, I think I, oh, hello, we are live. Here we go. Okay. Technical difficulties are done, uh, hopefully for the night. Roger Pascal, Real Impact TV. We are absolutely elated that y'all are here tonight, that you're watching this. This is uh, December the 12th, 2021. So we're excited that you're here tonight. We've got a fun night tonight. This is just going to be an absolute blast of some of the stuff that we've got going tonight. So thank you for being on here tonight. This is a weekly call. We do every Sunday night at 7 o'clock Central Time. Uh, it's questions and answers about real estate. It's uh, as, as Tony Jardu uh, says all the time is you don't have to wait till Monday morning to get your answers. Get them on Sunday night. So here we are. If you have any questions whatsoever, go over to the chat on the side of the screen. I think it's this side over here um, or below you, depending on what you have. If you don't see a chat a box on here, um, reduce your screen down a little bit um, and see if it pops up then. But should have a chat on YouTube and on the Facebook Live that we have here. You ask your chat on there, we will uh, we'll get answers to your questions. And uh, you can always feel free to, to reach out to us before the event and put some questions on there, uh, some comments uh, about what your, uh, what your challenges may be. Uh, we also want to hear some of your successes that you have. So thank you for being on here tonight. Once again, excited. Uh, we got a couple of weeks till Christmas. Uh, we got, hopefully you've got lots of stuff happening at Christmas. We are, uh, uh, we're, we're going to, we're going to be all over the place. We have grown kids and, and we're going to be having Christmases, uh, in, uh, uh, at my brother's. We're going to be, I think at my brother's, I, I don't know, but, uh, here at our house, at our daughter's house, at our son's house. So we have lots of different things happening. So we hope, hope you're well. Uh, we will be doing a live stream next Sunday night, but the 26th, the day after Christmas, uh, we're going to be all family, family time. So we will not be doing a call on the uh, on the 26th, uh, but we'll be back again on January the 2nd after that. So we're taking one week off. So other than that, we're excited that you're here tonight. We're excited that things are happening. A uh, couple of things that we're going to go over. One, and I wanted to uh, just kind of put out there. Uh, we we kind of do a tip, and we have Tony that has a absolutely phenomenal tip that he's going to be doing. Um, but one of the tips that we have this week is is I'll call you back on Thursday. You know, sort of like Wimpy on uh, on the Popeye episodes, where um, uh, you know, buy my hamburger today, I'll gladly pay you back on Tuesday. And uh, but but it's important to set up a regiment, set up a schedule on what you're doing on your phone calls, uh, who you're going to call and how often you're going to call them. And this is not anything to call and just check on the weather. This is just building relationships where you're building relationships with your realtors, you know, maybe your bird dogs, maybe your title companies, mortgage companies, the builders that you're working with, those sailors. Uh, and it's not to spend a lot of time with them. It's not to waste their time. It's just essentially uh, just checking in, letting them know that you're around, um, giving them a, uh, a, a great update on anything you're working on is if you're working on some offers or something, you might want to reach out to your title company if you're able to use them for the, for the closing and just kind of give them, keep them updated on that. Reach out to your lenders, make sure that you keep them up, updated on that. So this is, this is it. I'll call you back um, or I'm going to set up my weekly schedule I'm going to call. Um, I have that set up in my Google calendar where it pops up every morning on who I need to call. And it might not be calling the same person every week. It may be calling the same person maybe every two weeks or three weeks or maybe once a month or something on that basis. But just keeping that relationship out there. So um, um, and then you'll you'll be amazed the kind of feedback that you'll get on that and, and where that's going to take you. So so. Just our little tip of the week on that, um, set up your schedule, set up your phone calls, uh, call your mentor, call your uh, or mentors, call your business partners. People want to kept, be kept in the loop. We have so many people right now, they love to send text and there's a place for text, but there's never a replacement for that one-on-one -on -one voice call that, that you may have. And it's not to call to waste anybody's time. 
it's just a call to check in and uh, see what they've got. If you have a wholesaler out there, say I'm just calling to check in to see if you've got anything out there that might have some interest to me. And they know after a while, you're going to be the first person they call when they do have a pro property out there that falls in your criteria. So you want to build that up and, and make that happen. So with that, we uh, we have lots of stuff happening with Impact. We're very excited. We have our um, first meeting this next uh, Saturday, a week from yesterday. Um, so Saturday of this week, uh, we're going to be in Oklahoma City at one o'clock. So we're excited about that. If you have any questions on that, you can reach out on our websites. You can reach out on Meetup. Uh, type in Impact Oklahoma City. Uh, you can get our um, our schedule there. But uh, we're going to be doing a meeting up there in Oklahoma City, and it's kind of a Christmas celebration, uh, but we're going to be doing a book exchange. We did one of these last week uh, down here in uh, the Fort Worth area, and oh my gosh, it was phenomenal. We all brought a book. It doesn't have to be a new book. It can be a book that you've read 20 times, and we wrap it or put it in a gift bag, and we draw numbers, and we each get a book to add to our library, and it's, uh, it's, it's phenomenal books. Business books, uh, biographies, uh, real estate related books. We're not looking in something like that. You're not really looking for a John, Tom Tom Clancy novel or anything like that. So that's what we're going to be doing on um, on Saturday, our first time to meet up there in Oklahoma City. Uh, and we have some other meetings this week. We've got a busy week this week with lots of stuff happening. Um, so to start that off with, we would like to add... Uh, Tony Jardou. Tony is our uh, master trainer, uh, impact master trainer for Arlington and Waco. And um, Tony, you've always got some incredible tips. So uh, um, fill our head with knowledge tonight, Tony. All right. Well, I, I appreciate that, Roger, and good evening. Uh, first, I, I do want to start by just echoing what you said a little bit ago about calling, I'll call you on Thursday. We've heard this a long time and it, it's not just for real estate, but boy, it really applies to us here in the real estate investment world. And that is the fortune is in the follow-up. It is so important to do as Roger said, is just keep in touch with folks. The fortune is in the follow-up. Well, let me start by mentioning that we do have a couple of really important meetings this week. Impact Waco will be having our next meeting on Wednesday. The 15th, December 15th, we hold that meeting at the Holiday Inn Express and Suites, Waco South in Waco, and that's at 5701 Legend Lake Parkway. And we start at six o'clock with networking. Meeting starts at 6.30. Meeting presentations start at 6.30. And that night, we're going to be talking about kind of setting your 2022 in the right path by evaluating deals. We're going to evaluate deals for real estate investors so that you have the right information to charge into 2022 so you can start making offers and feeling confident with your numbers. The next night, Impact Arlington, Thursday, December 16th, is our next meeting. We start at 630. Meeting presentations start at 7. Our location is the Texas Gulf Center, 8940 Creek Run Road in Fort Worth. It's right off of I-30 and East Chase Parkway. Really excited about our meeting that night. It is going to be a night with real estate investing team members you're going to need as part of your team. So we're going to have panel discussions, a couple of panel discussions. We're going to have a title company, insurance company, loan servicing, general contractor, roofer, and even our accountants. Our accountants. Uh, all folks that you're going to want on your team. So. We're going to have an opportunity to discuss with them, their industry, how it applies to us. Looking forward to having everybody join both of those meetings. They're free. We'll have food and drinks available and door prizes. Here is a follow-up to my tip last week. Last week, I talked about buying and borrowing money under your personal name or your LLC. Tonight, let's continue to talk about money. And let's look at how you can be presentable to a lender, such as a bank. And the first step is prepare a business plan. Some people might call it a credibility packet. It's okay. Call it what you want to call it. I'm going to call it a business plan. Don't wait until you have a deal to do this. Start putting together 
your business plan. Do it now. Don't wait until you have the deal because I'm going to tell you why. First off, it only needs to be one or two pages long. You're going to be making an introduction to your lenders. This is a great way to present yourself via an introduction. What you're going to put on that business plan is a company purpose. I call it a purpose. Some people call it a mission statement. I like to go with purpose instead of a mission statement because mission statement seems to be kind of a, a finite period of time, kind of like a military operation. So I use the phrase company purpose. I follow that up with our business operations. What do we look like? What's the, I'm going to define the scope of our operations and what our strategy is. Next is company information. It's going to be brief. Year, the year we were established, our ownership, which in our case is my wife and I, and the specific purpose for that business. Now, we have multiple businesses under LLCs. <clears throat> Excuse me. We put all of those in succession on that first page of our business plan. We also follow up with a company philosophy. And we're going to include, we're going to include that. And I would suggest only include it if you really have a reason to exist other than just making money. If you're just all about making the money, no need to have a company philosophy. We also include our core values. We find those to be extremely important for us. We believe everyone deserves a clean and safe place to live in. We say what we do and do what we say, and we build relationships so everyone prospers. You can go down this road too, brand promises. We have a couple of brand promises in our business plan. And our contact information for us personally, the principles of our company. You know, Again, in our case, it's my wife, Cindy, and myself. We provide our name, phone number, and email, and a very short bio, one to two sentences. That's the gist of our business plan. We also attach tables, tables containing information about our investment portfolios. We have rentals. We have owner finance properties. Uh, if you've done any wholesale deals, you can put a table in there for those. If you've done fix and flips, you can have a table for those. And then we have a summary because we have properties in different LLCs. We put a summary together. If you want, and this is a great idea, too, you can put one page summaries of specific deals that you've done. I know Doug Toon, who we're going to hear from a little bit later, Doug does that. He has one page summaries of specific deals. And he goes into a little bit of detail with those. It's a great way to impress a lender. And you can cherry pick those. Just pick the best ones. Include them in your packet. Also, attach a personal financial statement and business financials. You want to put your balance sheet and your profit and loss statement in there. Now, at this point, I don't attach tax returns because I'm going to present this business plan to a prospective lender. I don't know if I'm gonna do business with them. Not yet. So what I do is I wait to provide tax returns to the point when I know I'm gonna do business with them, that they're going to look at one of my loan requests. So now that you've got your business plan together, now remember, this is not a request for money. It's a plan of action that you have for your business and you're going to make an introduction with that plan to a lender. So it's basically setting the table for you to request money. With your business plan in hand, go visit some lenders. That's right, go in person. Best way to start establishing a relationship with someone who represents a company you wanna borrow a lot of money from. Avoid the big banks, choose smaller banks, a lot easier to work with. Don't settle on the first lender you visit. You want to make some comparisons. You're gathering data at this point on who you might want to do business with. So remember this. You're interviewing them. That's right. You are going to interview them. Don't be arrogant. Just be professional. And when you ask the right questions, the more credibility you're going to have. 
don't waste time with a junior loan officer. They're not going to be able to make some decisions for you that you're going to want some questions answered. They're going to have to probably rely on getting it from somebody else. So you get it from somebody else. <clears throat> Ask to speak with a senior loan officer, VP, vice president, and above. Present yourself this way. A brief introduction to who you are and what your business is all about. And then give them your business plan. It's only a page or two. They can skim through it pretty quick. And if you're new and you're working with me, when you introduce yourself and you talk about your business, just tell them, my business partners and I, this is what we do. Sure, lean on me. If you're working with someone else, lean on them. They're your business partner. Now you want to start asking questions to see if you want to do business with them. Ask them about their loan terms. As we discussed last week, you might want to borrow under your personal name or your LLC. Ask them what terms they provide for borrowing under your personal name and your LLC. If you borrow personally, ask if they're okay after you have the loan to move the title over to your LLC. We talked last week why you would want to do that. There are a number of reasons why you would want to do that. More advantageous loan terms under your personal name, but then you can get the protection provided by an LLC by transferring ownership of the property to the LLC. You still have to pay based on your personal name, but you can have your company make those payments. What's the minimum loan amount you'll lend for? You want to ask them that question. What minimum down payments do they require? You can ask that along the lines of what loan to values they have set in their policies. Seasoning requirements to refinance. That's a good question. That is, how long would I need to be on title before I can refinance my loan? All banks are different. It's not a regulation. It's not a rule. It's a policy. Do you portfolio your loans? This is an excellent question. Portfolio your loans. That question creates incredible credibility that you know what the heck you're talking about. Portfolio your loans means what loans do they keep in-house? They don't sell to the secondary market. You start using some lender lingo like that, you jump to the top of the class. How do I get pre-qualified? That is, what do you need from me in order to determine if you want to lend to me? So if you ask some of those basic questions, get those answers, then go to the next bank and do the same thing all over again. You're shopping for the best terms you can find. Because when you do have a deal, and if you've already done all of this, you'll already know which lender has the best terms for you. And Roger, that's what I have to share tonight is my tip of the week. Wow. Um, that is great. Am I? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Wow. That is great. That is, uh, such invaluable information. You know, I get a call probably about once a week from somebody that wants to get in real estate investing and I'll ask them, well, what are you looking for? I'm looking for anything. What do you, you know, uh, have you talked to anybody about money? No, I'll just go to the bank when I find a property and I'll get a loan. And those are the people that aren't, aren't successful because they don't have a plan. They don't have anything in place. And, and they don't know who they're going to talk to. They don't have a package put together. Mm -hmm. They're not a good sell for the, for the loan officer or the VP or the president of the bank that they're going to be talking to. So that, that is just invaluable information for people to have for any of us that are doing investing to have our ducks in a row, just to, just to show how professional we are when we go into that bank or go into that lender. So that is, uh, uh, oh my gosh, that is just great information. Hey, you know what, while, while you were on, we had a gentleman by the name of Carl and this falls right into the business that you do. Carl was asking, does a direct mail still generate leads? Tony, tell us. Yeah. Does, yeah. Does it? Carl, Carl, great, great question. And I, it's funny. I read a, a Facebook post about a couple months ago and the, Post was from a very active wholesaler, young guy. And he put in this post, if 
you're still using direct mail, then you were born before 1985. Well, Carl, I was born a long time before 1985. We still use direct mail and it still works. So I understand where this fellow is coming from. He may be using all the latest gadgets and apps in order to do his wholesaling business. But a great way to deal directly with property owners is to directly mail them. And one of the things that we do when we send our mail out is handwritten letters. Who gets handwritten letters these days? Nobody. Who writes handwritten letters? We do. We write handwritten letters. Our envelope, handwritten. Return address, handwritten. We get our envelopes opened and we receive phone calls. Doesn't mean everybody's truly looking to sell, but we receive this in response. I'm calling you because you guys took the time to write a letter. I get a lot of letters, but yours is the only one I'm responding to. So yes, direct mail still works. Now, which lead list do you use? That's another question. There are a lot of different lead lists, leads, lists, sorry, that you can use to generate leads. This is tough to say. So you have to just try different lists and be persistent. The success rate on getting responses is going to depend on how consistent you are and how persistent. So we always use it as a multi-touch approach. If we mail out to a specific, say, landlord group in a specific zip code, we're going to do that again next month and again the following month. So it's a multi-touch approach that has worked extremely well for us. So yes, I would answer Carl by telling you direct mail still works and it has worked extremely well for us. Thanks for the question. All right. Am I on? I guess I am. Okay. So, uh, okay, there we go. All right. We got a little delay going on here. I think it's on my end. I've got a slow internet tonight, I guess. But, um, uh, that, yes, that is, uh, that, you know, I, I hear these, these, uh, uh, and I, I don't want to categorize somebody, but sometimes it's like the millennials, you know, are as, are as, you know, are as bad at, at saying, oh, that technology is outdated as, as some of those that, that aren't millennial, those of us that aren't millennials say at the same time, this is the way it's always been done. So there's a <laughs> happy medium in between all things different, all things work sometimes. So, uh, so thank you so much for that. Um, uh, stick around, Tony. I'll, I'll bring you back on here in a minute. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna run in real quick. Uh, um, first of all, I'm gonna have I'm going to uh, answer um, another question that somebody asked on a subject two, and uh, they're buying a subject two, and they're looking at the pros and cons of buying the property as a subject two traditionally, and moving the 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 deed over the name on the deed over to their entity, or that particular property is owned by an LLC. It's an investor and there's no other properties in it. And would it be better to buy that property or, or buy that LLC? Well, I'm going to tell you, it's going to always be absolute better, absolutely better to buy that LLC. So Karen, that was a great question on that. Um, if you've got that opportunity and that investor is selling you that property essentially on a subject to, but you don't have to change that deed over. You just buy that LLC. Absolutely do that all day long. That is just a great way to uh, to reach out and, and pull some properties over. And then you don't have any of the other um, kind of the other issues out there. I would still get some, uh, talk to a title company and see about the value of getting title insurance for that transfer, because you want to make sure you're not going to pick up any other liens that are on there. Uh, we see that very often in this business on subject twos, where people will buy a property on subject two and they they really won't go through a title company. They may go through an attorney or they, they may just kind of muddle, muddle through it and do it themselves. And then they wind up with some crazy liens on the properties and they'll never be able to sell those properties because there's a big old giant IRS lien on it or a big old child support lien or something like that. So if you're going to do that, absolutely buy it, in L buy it, buy the LLC, 
Um, yes, always. Um, so, so we have that. Uh, we have another. I'm going to jump to another couple of questions before I get Pam on here. Um, so, uh, uh, if we use the contracts um, off of our impact training site, uh, should we have an attorney look over it first? Well, um, we always suggest that you look at working with attorneys, but you want to work with a real estate attorney, John. You, you want to make sure that that real estate attorney um, is is working on behalf of the property. But um, I, you know, I normally will always suggest that if you're doing a property in Texas or any other state, that you're going to use the promenaded, promulgated um, contract, unless you're doing a special contract, like an option or something like that. But if you're doing a, a standard buy or sale, um, you want to try to use the state promulgated contract. And the reason that is the title companies know them. They're very comfortable with them. They, uh, they cover both the buyer and the seller. Uh, they're, they're not going to be skewed one way or the other. If something happens and you wind up going in front of a judge on something someday, somebody goes, does something goofy uh, on the other side, because I know that the people I work with will never do anything goofy, but um, that the judge will look at it. They will already know how that contract works. So yeah, we have a lot of great contracts that we have a lot of great documents that we have in our, um, in our system uh, that is available to our students and available to others out there. But uh as much as you can, you want to use a state promulgated form. But if you are using another form, uh, just make sure the title company, the escrow officer, the attorney with that title company is comfortable with that form. If not, um, always always ask, what can I do to make keep this rolling? What can I do to make sure, make you happy and protect myself and protect, protect the other party in this? So that's a great question there. So real quick, we're going to jump over. Uh, CJ, if you can put Pam on here. We got some stuff coming up on Pam, and uh, um, Pam, I think, has a uh, interesting story for us tonight, don't you? Oh, uh, we're talking about my, uh, so, you know, it's Christmas and everything, you know, talking about elf on the shelves and everything. So I had a, a tenant, I was going by to, uh, well, I was actually going by to collect money. And so the kids asked me to come in. They wanted to uh, show me about their elves and they had been talking to their elves and they're like, you know, Miss Pam, we really have been good. Could you please tell our elf, you know, how good that, you know, mom has been paying, you know, rent on time. She's not been late this year. <laughs> Started laughing. And I was like, yeah, I go, Mr. Elf, mom's been on time and uh, hasn't been late. And so I'm having a conversation with the kids and the elf. And I'm like, oh, I can't believe I'm doing this. I wish I had it videotaped. Anyway, it was funny because the kids were so excited, you know, that mom's been paying, you know, rent on time this whole uh, year and she's getting a bonus. And so they're looking forward to getting a bonus. And what? so what I'm going to do uh, for the kids is drop a couple of little Santa gifts, you know, from the elves off for them on the day of uh Christmas morning. So we're looking forward and having fun with that. But I also want to reiterate on something that Tony brought up talking about lenders and money and everything. And he, you know, hopefully everybody really caught on about not waiting to the last minute, you know, going out there finding money when you're getting deals. Uh, we've, we have picked up three more deals and, you know, we're out there, uh, on the last one that we're picking up, you know, scrounging for money because, you know, we, it's just something we never donned that we would have this much business going on at one time and everything. So it's really important. And then Roger, I was going to also ask, you know, Tony brought up about the um, um, having, you, you know, a business plan and everything. And don't we have a way of posting those points uh, to our listeners that we can put something up so that they can capture that to write their own business plan off of that. Don't we have a way of people going and picking that information up? We do. We, uh, we have a couple of different ways there. The, of course, the easiest way is that they are an existing student um, and they're, they're going through our training program. Uh, actually, our training program from day one is based upon building their own business plan and uh, in those areas through there. And and then the, the points of uh, going to a lender, as you were saying, uh, we have that too. 
Um, we are looking at um, uh, trying to figure out an easier way or a great way to get some of that information out. But the best way to get that information is, is contact uh, your local uh, impact group, uh, your local impact master trainer, as we, uh, um, and, yes, and they will work. All have it. Say that again, Pam. Now we all ha have that. So I yes, we do. To... We do. So that's a great way to, to reach out there. And, um, you know, once again, as I was talking earlier about making those phone calls, that's what we're here for. You make phone calls, you talk to us. Uh, we're a wealth of information. Uh, we, uh, we will work with you on making sure that, well, you know, whatever, whatever you do, you're in the right program. You're getting, getting the right information out there in front of you. Uh, we have multiple ways of doing that. And, uh, but yes, yeah, so we, we can, uh, we can definitely help anybody out with that. And, and you need to know that, you know, everybody needs to know that. So, uh, uh great question. Great question. So, so Pam, I think you have something coming up Christmas week. I do. Uh, December the 21st, we are having a meeting at the uh, Big Shot Golf. Uh, start Networking starts at 630. It's going to be about safety. And people don't realize uh, how important safety is. And it's not. And here's the thing. I will give an example here. We're going to talk about how when you meet people, how to protect yourself and everything. But this actually happened to me over a couple of years ago. It is when you're going inside and looking at a property, you're being by your, if you're by yourself, I happen to be with my mom and niece and we got locked on the second floor on the outside patio. And we were there for three and a half hours uh, yelling for help. So we're going to cover, people don't think, you know, safety is important, but it is. And it's things that you don't stop and think about that you do need to stop and think about It's how to, if you're especially a female by yourself, what pointing out things you need to do uh, if you're meeting someone that you don't feel comfortable. Uh, Arlen uh, Hamstead is going to be there talking about he teaches gun safety. We're going to go into a little bit about that and stuff. So it's going to be a real interesting topic to talk about and to end the year with. And we are going to hit things about talking about goals and uh, subject matters we're going to cover, you know, for next year. So it's at the Big Shot Golf. 6.30 is networking, 7 p.m. is the class, and there you go. To be, uh, or you have that set for the 21st, right? The 21st. It's a Tuesday, yes. All right. So, um, uh, that and that's a great facility. It's up there by Texas Motor Speedway. But uh, we've, got a, uh, we've got a question, and, and if anybody on this call doesn't know who Pam is, Pam is kind of known in our system as the rehab queen. <laughs> so uh, I'm sure she would much rather rather be queen of Sweden or something, but you know, it is, it is what it is. It's uh, Do I need to go get my crown. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You need to get your crown. That's right. So, but we had Robert ask a question. Uh, Robert said he's a new investor and he doesn't really have any contacts with uh, contractors or anything. And he's asking how is the best way it, for him to get repair estimates on properties and to learn how to, learn how to do that, learn, learn what he needs to do. So what would you, what would you give as a suggestion to Robert on that, Pam? Okay. So everybody needs to understand that when you're remodeling or rehabbing, whatever it is, you're going from the ground up and from the outside in. So what I'm talking about, I'm sorry, you're coming from the top down on inside and then from the outside in, meaning you're going from ceiling to floor and then from walls to the inside. So talking about, and I think Tony's going to talk about this in his meeting about how to evaluate is you need to, you need to get online. You need to go to Home Depot. You need to go to Lowe's. You need to look at, you need to look, my advice, look at your own house. And this is what I did when I first got started in rehab. Look at your own house, write down, there's paint, there's baseboards, there's appliances, there are cabinets, there's handles, there's door handles. Write it all down what you have in your own house. Then go to the Home Depot website. Look at it. How much is it going to, how much does it cost for door handles? How much does it cost for your bathroom sinks? How much does it cost for a bathtub? How much does it cost for a sliding patio door? How much does it cost for a window, write it down and then go in and, you know, and talk about the measuring of that. And then if, 
you know, you're around and you know some some painters, some window uh, installers. Go go to the investor sites. There's one that's called, I think it's DFW REI. It's where the house is upside down. Ask questions on there. Go to Bigger Pockets. Ask questions saying, "Hey, I'm looking at this house, thinking about it's about a 1,500 square foot house. It needs, you know, just repaint. Can I get an estimate?" And you want to do that up front before you go and actually do a job. And then the next thing is get someone like me or someone else to go over it with you and, you know, and to analyze all of that. I'm going to be honest about this. I know everybody's got their little, their analyzer where they can plug in numbers, but numbers are changing weekly. And I mean, we just finished up our Justin property we went $9,000 over budget, what I initially started with, but it was because we had to go to a different, you know, primer paint to a higher cost. We had to, we couldn't get all of our base for, boards from Resdor, so we ended up picking some up at Home Depot, which costs more. So, and like I said, you know, a while back, you usually do 10% over what you put in. We are doing 20% over now to cover our cost basis. So hopefully I answer the question. Anybody out there, please feel free to call me. I, this rehabbing is something I love. It's in my blood and I love it. But also remember, it's just another job. You know, it's not that money of wealth. It's not mailbox money. All right. Good deal. That is uh, uh, that's some great information there. Um, you know, and, and, and I will tell everybody, if you can, go to my webpage. Uh, after this call, Hannah should be posting our uh, Justin property. Uh, it's a video show of our, our house. And tomorrow I'm interviewing Daniela, who did our staging. And we're going to talk about staging, and we're going to be posting videos on that. Not only will I be posting videos on my own Facebook, but you'll find it on uh, the Impact, you know, Decatur Alliance. I'll post it to our mastermind, you know, whatever. But like I said, there we go. Oh, I was going to say, what, I put everything on an Excel sheet. Yeah, that's great. That, you know, I do the same thing, um, you know, and, and, you know, I'm. it's kind of depressing right now as I go into Home Depot and go into Lowe's and the other other contractors. Resdor is a great source. Um, you're right. But, but here's the thing that Resdor is going up. Go ahead. So here's, thing, so, so here's the thing at Resdor. I'm my contractor's at Resdor and he's picking up baseboards. And we have right now we have three projects going on. And so we usually buy them, you know, according, we'll go pick up project for baseboards for Justin, you know, baseboards for Bowie. Then we'll go pick them up uh, for mineral wells. Well, he's like, hey, they're out of baseboards, but the guy just found a whole pallet. I go buy every single one of them. Every single one of them. We just found backsplash for our houses. I went to floor, I went to three floor decors because they're five dollars a sheet right now, and we bought a whole pallet of them. So you need to be prepared for all of that. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it's like I'm saying. It's pretty disappointing, d discouraging to go and see some of these prices as they're going up pretty rapidly, as you said somewhat on a weekly basis. But if you got a price on a doorknob from three weeks ago, you don't have to necessarily go and, and look. It's not going to go up dra that drastic uh, on there. You just got to look for availability because like, you, you you hit the nail on the head a while ago when you talked about, you know, you talked about this several weeks ago. You had to go two counties away to pick up primer yes. because you just couldn't get primer at the uh, at the home stores. So, uh, yeah, that that's the market we're in right now. Uh, don't foresee that changing anytime in the future. None of us have a crystal ball. But just be prepared for it. But understand, yeah. And I use an Excel spreadsheet too. And that way, when I'm working with a contractor, uh, we're all on the same page. We know exactly when I had to replace that interior door to that bedroom that somebody put their fist through. Um, I, I know, I you know, I have a pretty good idea what that door is going to cost. And um, um, you know, I know that it's it may have gone up three or four or five dollars. I will, tell, I will tell you one thing when you're dealing with contractors and it's because we've got projects going on, we're hiring, pro, we're hiring contractors. 
this is so very important. And every, so I had a plumber come in and he goes, oh, it's going to be $4,200. And I said, so what does that $4,200 include? And he looked at me and I said, no, I go, does, I said, you know, is that you buying the toilets? Is that me buying the toilets? Is that, I go, you need to itemize out what that $4,200 is going to be. And so many new people, I mean, they just get where, okay, he says $4,200. Well, your idea of what you think a plumber's going to do and what actually needs to be done are two different things. And here's another example that people don't realize talking about putting up tile. So if you're putting in all new plumbing, because if you're a two handle in a shower, we go to one handle, same thing to a tub. Well, our plumber has to come in and they have to do the valves. They have to put that in before tile gets work done. Well, then the tile guy comes and does his stuff. And then the plumber comes back and puts all the trim. Well, um, hey, Mr. Plumber, does that $4,200 include the second trip when you come back to install that? So it is, it, if, a, if a contractor does not want to give you an itemized project, you need to go look somewhere else. Absolutely. Absolutely. Have that punch list out there because what, and the other way it also happens is the plumber comes back and says, oh, well, you never told me you wanted the toilets replaced. Yes. You know, or, or, you know I mean? or better that. So the little hook line that you hook from the toilet to the wall and that little thing comes out, you know, or, or it breaks because you're putting the thing on. I forget what they call that. But we, we change them. It doesn't matter. We change them regardless. But if you're new, you don't think about that. You, you just don't think about that. And so when I don't see it on a plumber's list, I'm sitting there going, hey, you know, does that include the little turn off, you know, at the knot wall to the, you know, to the toilet or not? So that's why. So my rule is because I have a, a general contractor. My rule is anything that's over a thousand dollars has to, because all sales have to be approved by me. Anything over a thousand dollars has to be itemized. No ifs, ands, buts are about it. And if the contractor doesn't want to do it, then go find the next one. Very good. That's great. So, Pam, thank you so much. We're gonna uh, gonna keep you put you down in the in the, in the queue down there. We're gonna keep you uh, set aside here while we get Doug and Renee on here. But thank you so much. Wonderful information. We look forward to seeing you on the twenty first. So, uh, if we can, uh, uh, CJ, if you can start working on getting Doug and Renee on here. But we do have another question. Uh, this one's from John, and he is uh, stating that they have set up an LLC. Uh, to buy and sell property, should they have some sort of insurance? You know, and, and that's an individual type basis. Um, I'll just tell you what I do on that, John, is I have an umbrella policy. And umbrella policies are really cheap. And um, uh, so I, I've got one. I think it's about a $3 million umbrella policy that I have. And I just paid it. I think it's, well, it's less than $400, $400 a year. So, um uh, I think you're looking at a little over $100 per million dollars per year for those umbrella policies uh, for the most part. And it's just something that I have personally. Uh, it's not set in, I don't have it under my LOCs. I don't have it under uh, my partnerships or anything like that. I have it under my name personally. And that, that can cover me uh, for so many different things. If I get in a car accident and somebody gets really, really injured, uh, terribly bad, um, my car insurance is going to limit itself out. So that umbrella policy is going to cover me on that. If I have something happen, happen at a rent house and, and that for whatever reason, um, it, it comes out of the LLC and the lawsuit, uh, comes after me, uh, that umbrella policy in most cases will, will help cover me. And, uh, in some of those areas. And of course, as a realtor now, as a realtor, I have, ENO insurance also, but, but that's a separate deal. Investors don't normally uh, reach out there and do e and insurance many times. So great question on that, John. Great question. So Doug and Renee, are y'all out there? We are. All right. So um, excited. A couple of things going on. So uh, tell us what's happening in uh, in uh, in East Texas. Well, 
Well, everybody knows that we have a, uh, a sub two in the works and we, we were done with it uh, today. We had four showings and a cash offer. And uh, we're just waiting for everybody to get everything to us. So. Wonderful, wonderful. Are, are we, um, do we not have a video on you today? Are you, the power no. Of the no, we're, we're showing that we're there. Oh, do you? Okay. Well, it's not on my end, so that's all right. Uh, oh, fine. Hopefully yeah. everybody else can see you out there. If not, well, I know what you look like. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> here we go. so um, that is incredible. Yeah. And, and I've been watching that, that whole progress go through on that sub two. So y'all bought that as a sub two. You did went in there, did a, uh, pretty pretty extensive renovation on it. Mm -hmm. uh, did did really made that property pop, made that look nice. I've seen the videos on that. Uh, oh my gosh, it's just just uh, uh, phenomenal what y'all did on that. So congratulations on that. I uh, I'm excited to to see that on there. But y'all have something coming up tomorrow night, don't you? Yes, mm -hmm. we do. We have Arnie Abramson coming for our Monday night uh, real estate meeting. And we are so excited about having Arnie come in and teach us and teach our guests about the tax sale process. Um, a lot of people have heard about the tax sale process and they know that there's an opportunity to potentially go and get a really inexpensive house on the courthouse steps. And there are pros and cons to that. And there's a lot of fears that can go along with that. Like, the, one of the first things that comes out of the um, mouth of the gentleman that's running the tax sale is now you, you, uh, you can't make any changes to this house and several other things. They're kind of warnings that they give. And you, if you don't know any better, you'll think, Oh goodness, I'll have to hold on to this thing for two years and not touch it. And that's what Arnie teaches that's us. He walks us through what you can and can't do what the rules are that you really have to play by and how to cover yourself and all that. And uh, one of the things that we were able to do, I guess it's been three years ago that you bought the one in White Oak. Y'all, that was just such an incredible deal. It was a $5,100 house that Doug bought on the tax sale uh, on the courthouse steps. $5,100. It was a phenomenal deal. And what was all said and done after we'd put about $25,000 in repairs into it, we ended up selling it for, I think it was 103,000, 103. Yeah. That was a great deal. So $30,000 so. all in and we sold it for 103. But the, the, the most important part of that deal was, I mean, Arnie didn't, get me the deal. He just taught me how to do it. That's right. And I think what I learned from that um, mostly was how incredibly um, good it is to have somebody that you can call and say, hey, what about this or what about that? A mentor that you've paid to teach you how to do something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that turns around and I don't know what kind of uh, returns I had on that investment, but it was enormous. Um, and we've, we've bought other tax sales since. Mm -hmm. And so I paid the price once and now I can do it. Uh, when in the beginning I was afraid to do it <laughs> because there was so many risks. And uh, if, if y'all come and listen to Arnie uh, tomorrow night, it's going to take care of so many of the, the little questions, mm -hmm. but after that, he's still there, right. you know, so he, he's still available uh, to be able to ask questions of. Absolutely. So there, you go, Roger. there you go. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so uh, we finally got you on video. Now you were just a, oh. a an empty square there for, for a little bit, oh, but no. um. Uh, so I, I guess it had to go to the moon and back and, and uh, maybe <laughs> Venus and, and Mars were in the way or something. I don't know. Um, so, we'll, you know, and uh, and I've known Arnie and I've worked with Arnie and I've done tax sales. And oh, my gosh. And, and you know, you may think out there, there's some people might think mm -hmm. out there that tax sales aren't big right now, you know, and they may not be gigantic. But I'm yeah. telling you, as Tim Lockhart says all the time, 
winter is coming. That's true. Um, That's right. You know, I was uh, uh, talking to uh, um, a guy that's pretty high up in Wells Fargo today, and I mentioned to him about in Tarrant County, there's 147,000 mortgages that are behind on payments right now, mm -hmm. just in Tarrant County, Texas, and which is a number that I just have a hard time wrapping my head around. And he said, I don't doubt that at all. Now that just scares, you know, what out of me when I hear some, some executive at Wells Fargo, you know, just kind of not arguing that, you know, I was kind of hoping in kind of the back of my mind, even though it's good for business, it's bad for everything else going on is that he would say, Oh, there's no way that's happening. No, he didn't do that. He just said, yeah, I don't doubt that at all. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, what is going to happen? when this thing starts falling through and tax sales are going to be one of them. Uh, mm -hmm. There hasn't been a, uh, they, they, most of the counties have been holding off on tax sales for going on two years now. And yeah. um, uh, so they're, they're releasing them. They're releasing them pretty good right now. But when that flood comes, as Tim says, the winter is coming. Uh, yeah. We need to be prepared for it. We need to have that knowledge. You need to what's ha know, know what's happening out there. So what's going to happen is we're going to have a lot more properties than we have investors. So what does that do? That drives the property values down uh, on foreclosures and tax sales and short sales and everything else. So, yeah. um, uh, but we're excited that we're going to have uh, Tony there, uh, Tony, uh, um, Arnie there tomorrow night. And um, uh, that is a, uh, that's going to be, that's going to be a, a great meeting. He's always got the best information out there. And uh, if you've not seen Arnie Averson, you need you need to take take the time, drive out to Longview, go to the Big Red Barn. Um, I think uh, at the end of this meeting, we're going to have the address on on the uh, when we follow up to the end of this meeting, we'll have the addresses out there on a slide so you can look at that. You can also go to uh, Meetup.com, go to Impact Longview, and uh, the the event's going to be on there. But before we yeah. get to all. Oh, as usual, as usual, 6.30 is when we start our networking, and we always have our wonderful food sponsor, T. Blanco's, providing our chips and salsa. And it's the best hot sauce you're going to find anywhere. That's Absolutely, and I, I I always look forward to T. Blanco's. I mean, we, we're, we're in Texas, so we have a lot of great Tex-Mex and a lot of great Mexican food restaurants, as we call them, but T. Blanco's is one of the best I've ever been to in my life. Yep. So uh, everything's hand homemade, handmade, whatever. So yep. uh, uh, yeah, making a point to go there. But we've got a question on here that falls right in to Doug and Renee Tune and yep. y'all's knowledge. And Alpha is on here and uh, is asking. I've been studying, or this is this is the comment. I've been studying real estate investing for a few months now, and I just don't know how to get started initially. How do you suggest I get started in real estate investing? Well, I, I answered that. Um, and I, I'm trying to remember what I wrote down because I don't have it right at my fingertips. But, um, you know, I fought for years. I, I just didn't. I'm, I went to I used to go to Dennis's meetings and I would hear him say, hey, now, if you're interested, Go put a star by your name. I didn't do it. And I thought, well, you know, I, I did one deal happenstance. It was just a fluke. Um, and I did it and I made money and I said, well, okay, well, I want to do this again. So I started what, doing what everybody does and search the web, search the web, search the web, try to find out how to get this done. And it's like Roger always says, we, we can get it done, but, and I knew it could it could happen, but I didn't know how much faster it would happen if I had a mentor teach me what to do. And then I have him on the phone to be able to call him up uh, for the rest of the of the time. Say, hey, Dennis, what do I do about this? Arnie, what do I do about this? How do I fix this? How do I? not get into trouble and they've always led me in the right direction. Yep. And 
I'm telling you, every time that I've ever paid anybody to teach me how, I've made the money back in the first deal. And many times it was much, much more than what I paid. So, you know, I, I'm not doing this by myself anymore. I'm just not. It's not worth it. It's too much work. So, so the answer to your question is get a mentor to help you. I think so. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and, and we have lots of different mentors. We have them, you know, we have them in our business. We have them in, in uh, yes. you know, different parts of our business. I have them in, in my, my um, um, charity, charities that, that I work with and get advice <laughs> on there and get advice on grants or whatever. I have them yeah. in my faith. I have them, you know, that's, that's why we, we, uh, we belong to, uh, to, to the organizations that we do, the, the churches or, uh, whatever to, to get that great advice that's out there. So, yeah. uh, thank you for a great answer on that. Um, so we will see you tomorrow night, okay. 6 30. That's going to oh. be exciting. And, um, uh, we'll, uh, we'll make this thing happen. So, uh, y'all stay in the queue because I'm going to bring you back in, in at, at the end of the meeting, but we've got a special guest tonight and our special guest is a student that we have uh, or students that we have a husband and wife team. They've been working real estate investments for quite a while and they are in one of our training programs. But Wayne called me last week and oh my gosh, Wayne is like one of the funniest guys. And I know a lot of funny people, let me tell you, but uh, Wayne is one of the funniest guys and his wife, Tina, she just follows it up with, with just, just really bringing sunshine in the room and then expanding on the challenges that, that we all have in our businesses and stuff. So CJ, can you put Wayne and Tina on here? They have a phenomenal story of wonderful story from um, last week. Wayne calls me up and he has some rental property or they have some rental properties and um, uh, Wayne, just kind of tell us what happened on this, on this weird thing that you got. Well, I had Miss Tina looking across the office at me going, what do I do? And I'm like, about what? She put it on speaker. And one of our tenants is telling her, I don't know how to start this conversation, but there's ghost in the house. And I'm like, what? I'm looking at her and we're looking at one another and going, ghost? He says, uh, I saw it. The, the dog run in the back room. The dog come yeah, running. But yeah. The, the dog run in the room with an attitude, come back up the hallway, scared to death. Sat on, on the, the couch. Yep. Scared to death. And absolutely, only thing we could do is I'm sitting there laughing and she's trying not to laugh. And I'm like, what do you do? I mean, how do you deal with a tenant that is scared to death over a ghost being in a house when you've got 40 years of history in this house and there ain't no ghost in it. <laughs> that, and so what, did, what did you do? How did you, how did you, uh, how did you make your tenants happy on that? How, what did we do? Yeah. Uh, that was, we called the uh, pastor of our church. And we told the pastor that our tenants were, they're young. This is our first house actually out of the, out of mom and dad. And so they were just scared to death. They were just hysterical. <laughs> They're talking to Tina. And it's probably a good thing. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I could have handled it quite as professional as Miss Tina did. But they called their preacher, their pastor, and he had he came over there and they prayed it out of the house. And what was real funny, when our pastor went over there, they told him that they opened the door so it could actually leave the house. And our pastor was just like, well, if it got in there, it didn't need a door to come through. 
And so, anyways, and my husband thinks this is funny because he keeps on bringing our little puppet ghost in here. But, uh, anyways, they're, they're, but since then, they have prayed, they have put incense in the house, they have played gospel music on their iPhones all night long. And anyway, they burnt sage, they burnt sage in the house. They commanded the spirit out of the house. Our pastor went and prayed through the house. And, well, now they're comfortable and we still have renters. All right. That is just, you know, it, it is so much fun. You know, we have our challenges in real estate. And we have our challenges because we're it's a people business and we're dealing with people. But those are the fun stories out there that are out there. So, you know, and, and I want to set this up. Now, you, you got a picture of Wayne here. Um, Wayne owns a DeLorean. And he's got a Doc Brown costume. <laughs> so I mentioned to him earlier today, he needs to pull up in front of the house and honk the horn and yells at him in and, and, and his Doc Brown costume in the DeLorean and yell to the homeowner, hey, don't ask any questions. Get in the car right now. We got to go. <laughs> <laughs> and see what he does. So uh, uh, that would be so cool. <laughs> that, 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 so we expect to hear some updates on that in the future to make sure that, that the, the big, bad, ugly... Uh, uh, haunting uh, entity of whatever else is is gone, and and I feel bad for the for the uh, for the tenants because it, it was real to them, yes, and it was. Uh, you know we can we can make fun of that, but it is real to them, and and you did the exact right thing to do. That that is the only thing you could do is to get somebody to go in there and and give them a comfort level in here that yeah that's going to give them the, yeah and, Our, and yeah go ahead. Tina, Our I'm pastor sorry. actually told me at church today. He said. You know, I almost was going to tell him, did she not tell you about the triple homicide that happened in that back bedroom? And I said, don't you dare. Don't you dare. <laughs> and and I had actually lived in that house before. So I it was it been in my family for a while. So I knew the history of the I told him, I said, y'all brought it in, not us. <laughs> That's right. There you go. There you go. That is great. That is great. Yeah, there's a there's a ton of these stories out there that are that are on there. So I really do appreciate y'all uh, coming in on here. Y'all are in Burke Burnett. You also own a auto repair business. And yes, uh, so if anybody, if your car breaks down going through Burke Burnett, give them a call, right? That's right. Yes. All right. So uh, y'all are doing a incredible job out there. I've got to know you. Um, they were on our getaway down in Cancun. Um, got to uh, uh, get on the parachute behind the boat and, uh, uh, fly right next to a to a water spout or a tornado, whatever you want to call them. So that's yep. pretty interesting. Uh, uh, that that would be like an e ticket ride getting in that getting in that I'm thing. You. <laughs> hey, I got something to tell you. Yes, sir. Uh, as a trainee of Real Impact, what an amazing job Tim Lockhart is doing. Uh, I don't want to go into sure. detail as far as everything that we have been able to do since we met. Tim in a very short period of time. Well, let's just say it is more than anyone can imagine. Amazing job, Tim. Thank you. And it's Thank a really so good organization to be involved with. Good ethics, good training, good material. We just really enjoy it. Good friendship. We've made lifetime friends. Thank you, Roger. All right. Absolutely. So uh, uh, we look forward. Yeah, I look forward to coming out there. We're going to Holler at you. We'll go to lunch or something one day and and uh, run out there when when things get past the holidays. Uh, look forward to seeing that. I want to see your shop. I came from that business. I was in the auto parts business for 20 years. Um, and uh, um, all auto repair shops smell the same. They just have that smell. So, well, uh, hey, come see me. I'll show you something different. <laughs> okay. And number two, anybody that's thinking about thinking about doing this training, stop thinking about it. Get her done. Put your star um, by your name. Yeah, it's worth it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, we 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 change a lot of lives. That's uh that's that's what we look for. So that's an uh, understatement. <laughs> well, Wayne and Tina, thank you so much. Thank you for the testimony. Uh, Tim Lockhart, Wichita Falls is just and a wealth of information. It's everybody else that's in our organization. We're very very diligent, very picky on on who we want to do business with uh, as a uh, uh, as a trainer. So as a uh, master trainer. So thank you so much for being on here tonight and uh, uh, enjoyed the little uh, ghost thing floating around every once in a while um, in, in front of you all. So uh, uh, that, that was cute. But uh, thank you so much for that story. 
please call me with more stories. I love your stories. I love what y'all do. So, uh, hey. um, Pete, and, make it up. I mean, it's, it's our life. <laughs> that's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So thank y'all so much. I appreciate y'all being on here tonight. I uh, look forward to seeing you after the holidays. So uh, with Merry that, Christmas. CJ, uh, what, what's that, Tina? Christmas. All right. See you later. Bye. Hey, CJ, can you put Hannah on here? Um, she is uh, uh, one of our students out of the Arlington area. And um, she has a great question on here uh, about a property going into foreclosure uh, on January the 4th. Uh, it's in mom's name. Now, is this one, uh, Hannah, welcome on board, by the way. Um, Good to see you. Yes. Uh, is this the, uh, is this the one, uh, is this all a uh, reverse mortgage? It is. Yeah. It's a reverse okay. mortgage. I thought I remember hearing something on that. So mom passed away last year. Um, she didn't leave a will. Um, obviously, I guess it hadn't been probated or anything like that. Um, and you're asking, uh, being this one, it's set up to go foreclosure on January the 4th. Is there a way to stop foreclosure? Do you have any other background information on this before I answer, start getting some answers here? Um, well, this, it might be a challenge, but they actually have, there's 10 children involved that would all have to agree. Yeah, that, 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 that's, that's a challenge. So what I would do on this is there's a couple of things you can do here is one is you could actually start and you would have to start it like tomorrow, uh, doing a short sale process on that. Um, and, and I could help you out there. Other realtors, uh, can help you out that do short sales. Um, but if the homeowner, you as a buyer, you have an offer on the property, um, and a realtor, which banks require on a short sale to have a realtor involved, a listing agent. Um, if, uh, if you can, if you can get the, whoever you're dealing with at the, uh, um, as the, the executor, if there is one or somebody, they can call the mortgage company, have you on the phone with them uh, and tell them you want to, they want to go into a short sale status. At that point, the bank um, should, and uh, it's actually, they're supposed to, um, but I'm not going to answer for all banks out there. We'll put a hold on the foreclosure. You'll at least have a 30 day stay on the foreclosure with just stating that and saying, this is what we're, we're going to do. Um, and then what you would do is you would get with a title company that want to take this on. So the, the one, the one I know that is one of the best that will take this on because of the heirs and the, the lack of a will and not being probated would be diverse title, uh, which is over in, in, uh, the Dallas area. Um, uh, we do a lot of work with diverse and Chris and, and, uh, in that group over there. Um, but you can, you can actually, uh, get the get the person involved. Now, here's the challenge you're going to have to have is one, they're going to have to have the mortgage statement and on the mortgage statement is the phone number and the account number and everything they need on that. But the challenge is going to be working with the bank on somebody having permission to talk to the bank. So it may it may take getting a lawyer involved and uh, getting a um, letter to the mortgage company from an attorney, but you could probably do well on picking this property up uh, if you can get the heirs on the same page. And if it's going to go into a short sale, uh, that can be a challenge because the heirs are going to be um, not getting a dime out of the deal. And when you have 10 of them, chances are you're going to have uh, at least one of them that is not going to be very cooperative at all. But um, uh, it, it can be a way. Now, is anybody living in the house or is it currently vacant? No, um, t at least two of the children are living in the house currently. Okay. So my, my first step I would suggest to you on that one is to uh, uh, get them on the phone with the mortgage company, have you on the phone as a three-way. Uh, now, they may have to say, you know, I, uh, I have um, my buyer on the phone. Her name is Hannah, and I give permission for her to talk to you too. So if you have any questions, you can ask them on the short sale. Uh, do you know what bank it is? It is um, the Bank of New York Mellon. Okay, that's that's going to be an easier bank to work with uh, than, you know, normally it's going to be easier than 
than a Wells Fargo or a Chase or or one of the big big guys out there. So uh, if you have any questions on there, uh, you can reach out to Tony. Uh, he's he's experienced in and in, uh, in this. Or um, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be all over the place tomorrow. But Tony can answer any questions you have on this, or most of them. Or if not, if there's something in there that that jumps up that he hasn't experienced, uh, I'll be glad to jump in and get you answers for that too. But um, uh, I think I think you're gonna have to you know being it's a reverse mortgage, and uh, and all that. Now, one thing you could possibly do is, and this is a real long shot, is to offer to buy that note from the bank and. Um, they normally, it, 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 you can do that with a smaller bank. Uh, New York Mellon is a pretty, pretty good. They're, they're one of the bigger banks out there. So they, you know, but I've never dealt with them on that, but they, they might be able to just sell you the note and then you can foreclose on yourself, foreclose it yourself, not on yourself, but foreclose yourself. That's going to be a long shot. Um, I, they, they might even not even want to talk to you about that. But, um, but what we can do is we can get that set up as a short sale and uh and make that happen um but it may take getting an attorney uh which the title company has an attorney so you don't and and you're not you're not having to pay so that attorney will write a letter uh through the title company so you're not putting somebody on retainer or something like that so is anything else on that property that you had questions on no that that was pretty much it i just wasn't sure if anything could be done or um just with the lack of will and the timing issue but I'll definitely take a look into the short sale. Absolutely. So I, another thing, Hannah, is I want to ask you, how did you find the property? How did you come across it? Um, I was actually door knocking with uh, Tyranny. I think she's on the call, um, just on the pre-foreclosure list. Wow. Hey, yeah, CJ, I, can you put Tyranny on too? Have three of us on there? If she's on, well, she, she might not be on. But yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, there she is. There she. Hey, there you are. So, uh, <laughs> all right, did, attorney. Did you have any other questions on this? But that's great. Y'all, y'all did it by door knocking. That yeah. works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. First, first door. door yesterday. So, how many properties did you knock on doors before you found this one? This was the first one, actually. First oh one yesterday. We've we've uh, knocked on several others on other days, but we weren't like targeting pre foreclosures necessarily. So this was actually our first one, which was shocking. <laughs> that is great. That is great. I'm a, I'm excited for you. Um, I, I wish I could tell you that's going to happen every time you knock on a door, but uh, you know, probably not, but uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we found that is, that too. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So yeah, work on that and um, uh, work a little bit with, uh, with Tony on that. And um uh, we can, you know, uh, I'm a realtor. I can definitely throw that into short sale status for you. Um, short sales are coming back. We have not had short sales in about five years and, uh, to speak of because the market really hasn't demanded it, but, uh, I'm, I'm getting one or two calls uh, a week for the last two months. Um, got a couple of them that we're working on right now. Uh, not all of them that we do. Um, but short sales are coming back and, and, uh, this will be a good learning process for the two of y'all because uh, you can you can do really well working short sales in the future. So uh, this is exciting. This is uh, we're going to want some updates on this one to see where it goes <laughs> and if y'all were able to uh, to uh, to stop it. Um, having ten heirs or ten you know, ten plus heirs in this thing is just that's going to be your learning experience. That's going to be yeah. you're, you're going to have a good story. You're going to have a Wayne and Tina story when it's all said and done and go it may not be ghost but it will be a it'll be a story oh you won't oh you think that's something you wait till i tell you about this one <laughs> well another thing too to add on to that so we knocked on another door today our last door of the day in a kind of similar situation so this gentleman his dad passed away in october and him and his brothers, two brothers, inherited the house. Well, they actually have, so also didn't have a will. Um, and the thing that they're facing, which the probate attorney told them to essentially just like walk away from and let the house go, was that his dad took out. Hannah, can you remember the name of the loan? I, I think it was a HELOC. No, okay. it wasn't. It wasn't a HELOC, right. but it was a. It was a similar. It was like H E 
three other letters or something. Um, I think it ended with an M. I'd never heard of it before, but it essentially it was a home that was worth about $150,000 and this extra loan that he took out on it was $350,000 on top of it. And so I can totally understand why the attorney would tell him to walk away. Just curious if you know of, if you heard of what this loan is or if you know of any ways to help this guy out in any shape or form. Well, you know, one, number one is, is I would seriously doubt this guy's going to get any money out of the deal. Um, he's right. going to have to walk away, but, but most likely he's got other properties in there. Banks aren't going to loan, aren't going to loan $300,000 if they don't have $300,000 plus in collateral. So, okay. um, uh, there's, there's some other properties out there. And what, what would happen at that point is the bank would make an agreement to just let it, you know, let it go. And they would just walk away from, from that debt, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, okay. Some banks are cooperative. I've worked with other banks that won't won't do anything. They'll just let it let it go to foreclosure. Um, but that that's a uh, another great opportunity there. Um, something that that you mentioned in that in that statement. Don't always think attorneys have all the answers, because they don't. Um, the attorney told them to walk away from it mainly because the attorney's not going to make a dime off of it. So the attorney don't, the attorney doesn't want to be involved because there's no money in, in it for him or, or her or whoever the attorney was, which is okay. And there's nothing, I'm, I'm not slamming the attorney. Um, I think almost all attorneys would do the same thing. Um, but you as an investor, y'all have solutions and, you know, it's still, you know, it still may wind up costing the bank some money, but it may give you the opportunity to pick up a property that that you can pick up that won't go to, you know, won't go to a traditional foreclosure on that basis. So um, that's going to be interesting. So um, I'm excited y'all are doing that. Um, people need to, you know, I had a guy ask me uh, last night. I went to dinner with a guy and uh, he read, he's, he's reading my book. He hasn't read it all. And he says, I just can't wrap my, my mind out of how to find properties. And I said, you ask questions. They, they're not going to, people aren't going to send you a property unless you're looking for it. You know, they just don't randomly send somebody an email that's not an investor or it doesn't promote itself. You've got to go knock on doors, what you're doing. Uh, or as John earlier about sending letters, sending personal letters, like Tony was saying uh, for John. And um, all these things work. There's more properties out there than any of us could ever have time to buy we just gotta that the, the the work on it is is finding them just digging in there and knocking on doors as y'all are doing so that is wonderful i'm excited about that are y'all going to be at uh, the arlington meeting on thursday uh yeah i'll, I'll be there I'm okay yeah sure. this, okay well yeah uh, give me an update what's going on uh if you need anything on the short sale end of it uh as uh, from a with my realtor hat on I'll be glad to work with you on that. I'm going to be going out to Longview tomorrow. So uh, it'll be a tight day tomorrow. Uh, but definitely get them on the phone on that first house with the mortgage company and tell them, and, and the magic words they are going to tell them, we want to go into short sell status and uh, and work with the bank, New York Mellon on that and see what happens. All okay. right. Good, Good deal. Sure. Ladies, thank you so much for being on here tonight. Thank you for reaching out. And um, um asking those questions. We'd love to have you on here uh, on a continuing basis on, on the door knocking and the other things that y'all are doing. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so Thank much. You. All right. Hey, CJ, can you put, um, uh, can you put all the uh, uh, impact master trainers on the screen right quick and see how many we can get on here? This is, this is a new experiment we're trying out to see how many we can get on the screen at one time. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we have Pam and Tony and, and Doug and Renee. Uh, hey, there's Tim. Tim, you got some, uh, we haven't heard from Tim. I didn't know you were on here tonight. So I'm not in the studio. I'm in my own office tonight. So, uh, can, yeah, we got you un 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 unmuted. So Tim, you got a wonderful testimony tonight from Wayne and Tina. Uh, congratulations. Pat yourself on the back. Um, and, uh, uh, I, you know, they're not saying anything we didn't already know, you know, they're not saying a word, but, uh, congratulations. Well, um, um, I'll give them a cookie later. 
Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Let's leave them that twenty dollar bill under under the table. So uh, that's right. <laughs> so good deal, good deal. So um, uh, Tim, do you have anything to say before we? Uh, we're just we're just on here just talking right now. So uh, what? Anybody have anything to say, Tim? Do you got anything? You hadn't been on here. Well, uh, I, I would just like to say that this is a really good call. This is the first time that we brought students, uh, current students on to ask their questions live. I think that's a really good idea. And I think maybe something you might want to continue doing. Absolutely. This is fun. Oh, you know what? Where is Karen Maxwell? She's not on here. Do we have Karen? Here I am. Uh, she's somewhere. There she is. Okay. I'm, I'm here. All right. Karen, I... I just dropped the ball. Uh, CJ okay. just reminded me. Um, so uh, I, I can't see anybody that, that's not on the screen. So Karen, give us an update. What's going on? Keep everybody on here, CJ. Oh, well, we have uh, Oklahoma City, like you mentioned earlier. Their first meeting is this coming Saturday. So I'm super excited. We'll be traveling to there, uh, up there. And so anyone that wants to join us, please let us know. And um We'll, you know, make sure you say hello, and I'll be at Doug and Renee's meeting tomorrow night. I'm super excited to meet Arnie. I've never met him, and tax sales is something that I'm really excited about. So I want to be going with you guys to the tax sales and, uh, you know, getting my tipping my toe in the water on that and then diving all in. Um, we have uh, Grand Prairie, Granbury, Denton, Shreveport. We have several locations coming up pretty quick. So we're looking forward to a super Super, super busy 2022. I, I cannot wait because I thrive in the hustle and bustle. So I'm really ready for that. And we have our mastermind getaway coming up. Um, March, May, we have it. We don't have specific dates yet, but we're leaning more towards May. And uh, we, just, we are very excited. We cannot wait. Very good. Very good. All right. So does anybody else have anything uh, you want to close out with? Anybody have any comments? Hey, Tony, your your students, Hannah and uh, Tierney, talking about their, um, I'm too tired, uh, the reverse mortgage, you know, and um, Roger was saying about doing a subject too. I don't, they didn't mention about how long the property has been in uh, the reverse mortgage situation. If it's been in the reverse, if it, if they've received a letter, if the people have received a letter recently, shouldn't they be contacting the trustee to keep it from going to foreclosure? Yeah, it's a great point. Uh, when I talk to Hannah this week, I'm going to mention that to her. Because, you know, if there's that many heirs involved, what the because the bank can is this i'm asking you the, the bank can't go in and just do a, a automatic foreclosure without contacting all those heirs is that right uh i don't know the answer to that pam i don't know when, when we did when we did our reverse mortgage and it took us a while to do all the affidavit of airships we contacted it came down to the three months and we had to con we contacted the trustee uh keller mm -hmm. mackey out of dallas and because we made the contact, it stopped the foreclosure. Okay. So it's something that they might want to do and, and know because, you know, when you're trying to do a short sale, that can take time. Yeah. And um, they, if, you know, if you need some help with the Arab affidavit ships or whatever, let me know. We, we had to get six of them. Did you have the authority to, did they sign the authority to release loan information? For you? The, the so so they don't have an executor of the will neither did our people they didn't have an executor but there were two so what they need to do is all 10 kids need to get an attorney and they all need to sign a piece of paper saying that hannah and casey have all their approval to do all of this and take care of all this on their behalf right so and then from there, I mean, like I said, we had to get six air of affidavit chips and with yeah. them getting 10, but if everybody, but everybody was on board and everybody was in agreement about it. And I don't want wanting to get too much into doing this, but our reverse mortgage was all on same sex uh, marriage that was done in the eighties. And that caused mm -hmm. 
I mean, we had to jump through hoops and everything, but I would say that they need to contact the trustee because yeah. the bank's going to have to do the same thing that they're going to, they're doing. They can't just go in and foreclose. They have to know to, from what I understand, they do have to notify all the heirs. Okay. Good point. Yeah, Pam, that's some of the changes that we're experiencing right now that for me is uncharted territory as far as how these new banking regulations are coming into place and what needs to be done. And, and, you know, on, on, on a reverse mortgage, it's really hard to do a subject two. you can, you can absolutely do a short sale, but a subject two is going to be a little harder. So if I, if I mentioned sub, sub or subject two earlier, I meant to mention it was uh, for them to go after doing a short sale on that. <coughs> so uh, good deal. Good and deal. I would imagine their other thing that they're talking about is a portfolio. Um, yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, that's all I have. Sorry. All right. All right. Doug, Renee, y'all have anything else? Do to wrap it up? That's it. Yeah. We're excited to see people tomorrow night. All right. Tony, good you got night. anything? Nope. Karen, good. you good? No, I'm good. Tim, everything good? Yeah, it's all good. All right. Yeah. And Tim, Tim is uh, fortunate because he can always grab Wayne and go back in time on stuff. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> How many times have we wanted to do that, right? So, uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, all right. So, everybody, thank you so much. We got lots of stuff happening. So, we have Longview tomorrow night. Wednesday night, we have Waco. Thursday night, we have Arlington. And then next, is it Tuesday, Pam? Yes. Next Tuesday, uh, the Lions Center up there near... Uh, the 21st. 21st. All right. So, thank you all for being on here tonight. We went over a little bit on time, but... Oh my gosh, we have some great, great stuff happening. So, um, uh, if you're a student and you want to be on this call next next week, um, be on this call. We're also um, the day after Christmas. We are not doing a call, so that's the 26th. But we will be here next week. So, thank you all for being on here, CJ. Thank you. Uh, CJ is going out of town tomorrow, so you have a safe and uh, and pleasant trip uh, as you go out of town. So, thank you all. We will see you later. Bye. 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 Bye.